Liz, I think we have to wait a few more minutes. I don't think we have a quorum yet. Thank you. Okay, I just received a message from Nina. She's having trouble getting in. I'm going to send her the link again. Looks like we have Miss Faith, though, so you can get started and we can wait on Miss Holter to join in. Oh, okay, thank you. My name is Liz Kukla. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm going to read the Preamble for you this morning, this October 3rd, 2022. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976. Notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in this meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded the, via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak on a particular matter have been considered. We've also received emails from those who provided a written comment on a particular matter. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Ms. Faith. <laughs> Ms. Faith? Ms. Brown? Present. Present, Ms. I, excuse me. I'm present, Liz. Okay, thank you. It helps. So we have Ms. Faith, Ms. Brown, Ms. Holzer. Here, present. Sorry about that. And Ms. Britt. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. <clears throat> and Madam Chair, right. this morning we do not have any postponements or withdrawals for you. Okay. Full, full docket. All right. Um, Madam Chair, I do see that we have Councilman Griffin. Just about to say that. Um, let's start with his case. Uh, that's 22-163. Uh, yes. All right. So starting off with calendar number 22-163, this is at 7902 Bessemer Avenue. William McMillan proposes to establish use as scrap metal yard with outside storage and general industry zoning district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as detailed in the agenda and the public record of which there are three. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Thank you. Good morning. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? 
please raise your hand, reply I do. State your name and your address, please. I do, Blaine Griffin, 11810 Larchmere Boulevard. I do, Dan Vickerstaff, 3443 Lee Road, Shaker Heights, Run. Madam Chair. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since of 1929. In our records administration office, we found that in 1980, a permit was issued to establish use of premises for auto wrecking and storage yard. And then, Madam Chair, the most pertinent information, I think, after that is that in calendar number 20-194, a variance was granted with the, with the exact um, description that you're looking at this morning. Um, and it is my understanding that it is a repeat and that the um, variance rights expired. Uh, as you can see on the screen, there is a copy of the resolution. Now, the variance was granted with conditions. Um, and the conditions were as followed. Um, there was a revised plan that was submitted. Um, the revised plan showed that there would be paved curb cuts, paved and drained parking spaces and that drains will be installed in the storage portion of the parcel. Uh, he uh, the landscaping um, will be installed along Bessemer Avenue and East 79th Street, um, and that the appellant had agreed to the 10-foot high chain link fence currently located on the property. He agreed to maintain that. Uh, and that's all, those are the conditions that were shown on the revised site plan. That's what I have for you this morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, I did vaguely remember this, okay. Um, all right, legal standard, please. Oh, okay. I do not see Mary. All right, I'll go ahead and read it for you this morning, Madam Chair. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, the appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the scrap metal yard and parking regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will, <clears throat> one, result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance. Number two, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights. And that number three, granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, <clears throat> in this case, the appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will two, deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that three, granting of the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bickerstaff, I'm assuming you're the spokesperson. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. And thank you, Ms. Kupla, for giving a high level introduction of the project. Again, she mentioned this is a repeat. And that is what it is. Um, we did provide documents to um, Ms. Kukla and Marsh Rubens, as you can see on the screen now, illustrating some of the caveats that were presented in 2001. Main reason this is a repeat project is simply because as we move forward with the development of the building on the site, we determined that there were some challenges with regard to our property parameters. So we got all that information worked out. The parking being to the next sheet points, the um, designated parking along Bessemer Avenue is delineated as such. We have our um, ADA parking space, landscaping along Bessemer and East 79th Street, and our apron cut to be concrete or concrete, and the <clears throat> internal and external drainage to the site. We have a trench drain at the interface of the sidewalk and the parking area, as well as the trench drain on the interior of the storage area. We believe we met all the um, constraints and we appreciated we can obtain the approval for second. So essentially you let this expire, that's what happened. Uh, no, we didn't let it expire. We just discovered some parameter issues with regard to the property. That okay. worked out legally. Oh, okay. And it took time to do that. All right. Um, all right. Thank you. Uh, Councilman? 
Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I do support the project. I just want to make sure that the same parameters that we uh, advised them to uh, live by in the previous agreement is what they'll do with the uh, concrete apron, the landscaping, and some of the other things that uh, was mentioned earlier. So I do support it. Uh, I just want to make sure that they strictly adhere to what they say they're going to do. All right. Thank you. Uh, Maurice? Maurice Rowland, City Planning. Uh, I agree exactly with uh, what uh, Councilman Griffin just said. Uh, we're uh, just want to see them, uh, you know, do what uh, what they're agreeing to, um, with all the same stipulations. Um, as you can see from the original pictures, uh, the I know it's a scrap scrap yard, but it is kind of a mess. So we just look forward to having this completed. All right. Thank you. Uh, Bor, any questions? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to know uh, when these improvements are scheduled to begin. Sure, I can speak to that uh, after we obtain our approval, hopefully this morning. Plans have already been uploaded to the city's portal for plan examination for the building for the site. So we're hoping we can get our permit within the next 30 days and at least start some of the construction before we start. Thank you. Any other questions for it? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Hearing no other questions, Madam Chair, I move that we go ahead and approve the variances. Uh, and we would want the same conditions in effect as the previous variance that was granted. Uh, if, Liz, if Liz wants to read those again for the record, I don't know, but um, uh, we certainly want to make that conditional. And uh, in keeping with city planning and this in the councilman, the councilman's request. All right, thank you. Can I have a second, please? Member Brown, I second. Ms. Brown with the second. Go ahead, call the roll, Liz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Babe? Yes. Ms. Brett? Yes. Calendar 22-163 is granted with the same conditions listed in calendar number 20-194 and on the referenced revised final site plan. This will be ratified next week when we meet again and we will send the appellant a letter. Thank you everyone, appreciate it. All right, thank you, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Our next case is 22-160. This is at 1127 Parkwood Avenue. Karen Jenkins proposes to establish use as residential facility for five occupants in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as outlined in the agenda and the public record, record of which there are two. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name and your address, please. I do, Farron White, 1127 Parkwood Avenue. I do, Kali Tawthorne, uh, Famicos. Uh, I do, Ava Schmidt, Famicos, 1325 Ansel Road. Anyone else? Madam Chair. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. In our records administration office, we found <clears throat> that in 1908, a permit was issued to erect a two-story dwelling. In 1911, a permit was issued to erect a garage. And then in 1926, a permit was issued to erect a garage. Uh, and then, Madam Chair, 1976, a permit was issued to install aluminum siding. Uh, and then, Madam Chair, you may remember this case, uh, calendar 22-89. This identical request was made. However, the, this case was dismissed 
due to the appell the appellant's um, <clears throat> unexplained absence. Um, and that's all that we have for you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you gonna have to read the? Oh, I think she's here. here. Okay, legal standard, please. Thanks, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and an area variance from the minimum distance regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. White, go ahead, yes. tell us what you'd like to do. Uh, Madam Chair, before she starts, um, the name in the um, calendar is different. Can Ms. White describe her relationship here? Um, yes, the name in the calendar is, are you referring to the name of the business or the property owner? It says Jenkins. Okay, yes, he's the property owner and I am actually the, um, the legal tenant. I am trying to um, request a variance so that I can change the dwelling of the home into a residential care facility for up to five occupants. Um, in my file, I do believe that I submitted my um, signature requests from my occupying accompanied um, neighbors. I explained to them what type of facility that I would be running and I have their full support. I also have the full support from the city councilman, Kev Kevin Conwell. And um, they really believe that what I'm trying to do is going to make a change in the community. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, Ms. White, can you explain your, your operations, um, what you'll be actually doing in the facility, administering medication, um, you know, how many employees you'll have, like those sort of things? Absolutely. Um, we will have full-time staffing. We will have um, a ratio of one to five. These are going to be high functioning residents. We are targeting the demographic area from between the ages of 45 and 65. For clients who are being pretty much forced out of nursing home facilities because they no longer qualify to receive that level of care. And unfortunately, these people do not have any place to go. They don't have the family that they need to take them in and the need of um, just having that assistive care and to, for someone to be there to provide meals for them and to help them in the direction of what they're trying to go in life. We will be administering medication. We will be um, serving three meals a day and we will have supervision 24 seven. Um, I do not um, want to pretty much target on the typical demographic area of a mental health and addiction um, residential care facility. Pretty much want to focus on people who are within that demographic area of 45 to 65 who just are being forced out of their homes, what they know as, as nursing homes right now due to Medicaid and Medicare changing a lot of their restrictions prior to the pandemic, but now because of the pandemic, it's gotten a lot worse. Okay, thank you. Thank Mr. You. Hawthorne, welcome back in new capacity, huh? Good morning, everyone. Um, good to be here and uh, thank you, uh, Chairwoman. Um, so we, uh, if amigos, we are, uh, we have not met with the applicant yet. Uh, we would like to a chance to have to do that, talk through some more details, specifically around accessibility, the current condition of the property, and things of that nature. Uh, so um, we requesting that uh, this be postponed until we have that meeting. 
and um, would like to see, you know, like to see the letters from the uh, adjoining property owners and things that. Um, and so um, if we could have that, we would uh, greatly appreciate it. And uh, we're sure that the applicant is uh, looking to do uh, there is the, you know, there are problem areas in the targeted demographic. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything for this particular property in this neighborhood is uh, is up to standard. Great, thank you. Uh, Ms. Schmidt, you want to add anything? Sorry, I was looking for my unmute button for a second. No, I uh, just want to echo what Khalid said as the CDC for Glenville. We would like a chance to sit down and meet with the applicant before the case goes further. Okay, um, Ms. White, are you amenable to meeting with the CDC? Um, yes, I just, I, I would have definitely reached out prior to the meeting. I just didn't know that that was a part of the requirement. I was only informed that there were two specific requirements that I had to do before um, actually coming to this hearing this morning. Um, so yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I just, is there any way that we could possibly meet um, cause everything should be uploaded in my file. I know that, um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but the, I believe it's a Hawthorne. Yes. I think he just put his, uh, contact information in the chat. Okay, great. So yeah, Mr. Hawthorne, um, I think he said he requested, he wanted to see certain documents from the supporting, um, area from the. Yeah, what you submitted to this, whatever you submitted to the city will, won't go to him. So you have to have all, all that uh, available for, for your meeting with them. Okay. Was this, was there an email that was sent out to me from CDC? No, they're okay. requesting to, to um, look at your, your property to see the state it, that it's in and go over your business plan with you. Um, so that's why they're asking for the postponement today. So I asked if you were amenable to that and he's providing his contact information. So it's basically the same thing you submitted to the city, you would just go over with them. All right. Um, uh, board, any questions? No questions. No questions, Madam Chair. I think uh, we're we're glad to see Mr. Hawthorne with us again, and to the appellant uh, meeting with the CDC is going to be to your benefit. They'll help you along with this. So um, uh, I, I would agree that we go ahead and postpone. Okay. Um, Kelly, do you think you can uh, get it within 30 days, like meet and have all this done? Yes. Great. All right, Liz, give me a date in 30 days. <clears throat> okay, and that's approximately November 7th then. That's the okay. Monday, of course. Okay, all right, Ms. White, you will meet with the CDC and you'll go over your business plan and what you want to do there. And uh, we'll see you back here on November 7th, okay? Okay, where is um, his information posted? Because I don't see that in the chat. Um, I see it, but, uh, I will Liz, try to, you... I will see if I, I did get your, um, email. So I will try to email you and, uh, set something up. Okay. Okay. Actually, I, I found it. So I, yeah, I'm going to email you right now so we can get on top of this. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you board. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, moving on. Next case, 22-161. This is at 714 East 140th Street. Cross K LLC proposes to install a six-foot high chain link fence in actual front yard and inside street yard in a local retail business district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as outlined in the agenda and the public record of which there is one. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Thank you. 
I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do. State your name and your address, please. Is there an applicant for this case? Appellant, actually. I'm sorry, can you, can you hear me? Now we can. Yes, I do. And my name is Gorson A. Bolton. I'm the owner of the property. And my address here in Seattle, Washington is 5707 South Augusta Street, Seattle, Washington, 98178. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else for this case? Madam Chair. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This property was originally zoned general retail in 1929. In 2006, it was changed to local retail business. Um, in our records administration office, we were only able to find that in 1926, a permit was issued to add a billboard on the site. Uh, and then, Madam Chair, there are uh, no variances and nothing of note in the more recent history. Thank you. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting an area variance from the fencing regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bonang, uh, what'd you like to do here? Did it. Um, I I um, hired Mr. Nicholas to to uh, apply for a permit for a taller fence of six feet chain link to prevent trash being dumped, and thrown over the lot, and also to prevent uh, loitering and trespassing. Actually. Uh, so um, I had somebody go into the land and there were people illegally uh, camping on the property. I've actually also received uh, fines from the city of Cleveland Department of Building and Housing Division of Code Enforcement for cleaning the trash, um, garbage dumped on the lot. And so I ask uh, to be exempted from the four feet and to have a much taller fence to prevent any future uh, occurrences of this uh, illegal dumping and uh, camping. Okay, so, um, so it looks like the fence is up already. Is that correct? That's correct. So he said um, the contractor that I hired, Nicholas, applied for a permit. And um, whilst before he started, but for some reason, he said it was delayed. And uh, there were more trash. There were two dumpsters that he took pictures and sent to me from the neighbors doing renovation over there. There were so much trash and uh, dump dumpsters on the on the lot that he had to prevent them from uh, doing any more dumping. So he had to finish the fence. Okay, so he illegally finished the fence to prevent more dumping on your property there. That is correct. Uh, what, uh, what is like your, your maintenance schedule? Seems like you got a lot of overgrown um grass and other things around here yes yes ma'am that is what um that's why the city was charging for the long not being uh, the, the lot not being kept i mm -hmm. have mr nicholas to put this fence around so that he can maintain 
the property so that I don't have any more uh, fines from the city. So he's going to clear all this because even if he doesn't do that, the fence, there will be more dumping of garbages, of garbage, and uh, the dump, the dump trucks are putting their their dumpsters over there, and people are illegally dumping, continuously dumping stuff, and it's overflowing the whole area. All right, thank you, um, Maurice. Madam Chair. Uh, what's the uh, city planning's position here? So I, I wanted to read uh, some of uh, Councilman Polensic's uh, uh, email or letter that he sent to us. Um, I just wanted to go over some of the issues. He says the property is a vacant parking lot, which has never been developed, but worse, has never been maintained and currently has high grass, weeds, and the parking lot along East 140th Street, which, as you can see from the pictures I took, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the the place is a mess. Uh, they don't even cut the lawn. The weeds are overgrown. Um, the owner has already erected this chain link fence around the property illegally in opposition to the codified ordinances without any landscaping, let alone paying heed to the character of the community. Where, where permits pulled for the erection of, well, he wants to know whether permits were pulled for the for the fence. Um, in addition, legislation has been passed by Cleveland City Council for the East 140th Street Streetscape project to begin next year in the spring. This is a major multi-million dollar project being built on the street at Darley and Diana at the former Longfellow School as it is being transformed into a senior citizens complex. Because of this, I am not in support of granting an approval for the erection of a fence on this property. So the councilman is against this. Um, <sighs> Uh, as you know, we really object to uh, people putting up fences like this. It sounds like this area is going to get a major upgrade with uh, the city investing, you know, multi-million dollars in a streetscape. And I don't think that erecting a chain link fence on the front uh, of this property is really conducive, uh, goes along with what uh, is the city is investing in this neighborhood. Yeah. I understand that, but is there also a conundrum of how do you, how does he stop people from further dumping on his property? Yeah, I can attest to that. I didn't see any real dumping. As you can see, the lot, the lot is mostly vacant. Um, there's really not much trash or anything on the lot, and I don't know if that's the result of the fence or not. Um, I, I guess a decorative metal fence would be a much better solution than a chain link fence. Uh, especially if we're looking at upgrading this area. Which, of course, I probably would have asked for had this come in before they actually put the fence up without a permit. Okay, so it's not opposition to a fence, so it's I, a kind of fence. Right, well, it's, yes. Well, yeah. So it's, I, it's kind of a conundrum. Yeah. I, I, I understand mean, I see, the dumping I see both situation. Sides here. Yeah, I see both sides here because I believe I probably believe it's happening. People see a vacant lot and want to dump things in it. <laughs> so, um, Mary, right, she, uh, yep, yes. Not only a vacant lot, an unkept vacant lot. I mean, all of that overgrowth that's outside of the fence is the responsibility mm -hmm. of the property owner. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Matt what I would strongly suggest um, in solving the conundrum is for the property owner, if he would withdraw or or us to offer an extension for a meeting, actually, maybe that's a better way to do it. And for him to speak with the councilman or the CDC to learn about the plans in the area uh, particularly given he's from out of state. Um, Mr. Boating, how frequently do you come to Cleveland to see your property? Ma'am, I've been there only once. Uh, my job does not really allow me to travel that much. I'm a registered nurse practitioner here in Seattle at the Swedish hospital here, and my schedule is pretty tight. Surely, surely. That's understandable. Sir, how long have you owned the property? 
About five years, ma'am. And what's your intention for the property? I intend to build like um, a clinic over there in the future. And that is my main um, purpose as a registered nurse practitioner here. Sure. That is why I build it. But this continuation of uh, dumping and defiance from the city mm -hmm. without just leaving the, the lot open, I don't know if the city is going to continue to find me for um, all this garbage and people camping on that lot. Sure, sure. They see it as it's not being, uh, they see it as a vacant lot and they can do anything they want. So I don't know. We have hired this guy to put a fence, clean around on the street and inside and keep the place clean. Okay, so Madam Chair and to Mr. Bolting, maybe you hired the guy to do that, but in this picture that we have, he didn't clean up around it. So it seems like it's in your interest to meet with the councilman and the local CDC that you have a check and balance on your contractor to make sure that the property and the community are treated appropriately. And it, the meeting would also allow city planning to look at what you propose compared to the streetscape that's being planned for the street. Um, the fence is up, so nobody's going to dump, but you've not done it correctly. And I think that there ought to be an opportunity for um, something better to happen for this lot. Uh, and Mr. Bolton, just a quick question: Would um... Because if the you, if the ruling goes against you today, the fence will have to come down anyway. So will you be uh, amenable to looking at a more of a decorative fence there, like changing the type of fence you put up? Just along one hundred and fortieth, right? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Are you asking me? Yes. Well, you know, this this guy, you see, I'm here in Seattle. Our codes are a little different. I understand six feet is not the uh, uh, approved one, it's four feet. So right. if a more decorative um, fencing, well, the four feet, uh, the four feet doesn't require a permit. Is that correct? You still have to need a permit. You don't have to come here. You still have to get a permit, but you won't have to come to zoning because it'll be four feet. Madam Chair. Ms. Kukla. I'm, I don't believe that's correct. I think they still have to have an ornamental fence in the front yard of a local retail district. Uh, I guess I would defer to Mr. Riccardi for that. Just yeah, but I, meant, but I meant like if it's four feet, though, he, he does not have to come to zoning if it's four feet. That's what I meant. Um, and if it's four foot uh, ornamental, but if it's four foot chain link, yeah, have to come back. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yes. So the other thing, Madam Chair, uh, I have a question about that that gate there. Is that owned by the 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 property owner? Because that looks like it's a ten foot tall gate with barbed wire on it, that's which is door. definitely not permitted in the district. I think that that's the adjacent property. Yeah, I think that's that the adjacent property, yeah. that that the adjacent like property, property owner. Yeah. Yeah, Madam Chair, I might also add that uh, it's a, a you know thought occurred to me the fact that the the property has been left in uh, basically an unmaintained uh, situation. I think it probably mm -hmm. is conducive for people to dumping on it because it looks like it's a vacant property that's not being maintained. I think if it were being maintained uh, to a proper standard, it, it might also help to alleviate the dumping. But I mean, you can see that the grass and the weeds have not been cut in quite a long time. Um, which just makes it look like it's an abandoned piece of property. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Boatnang, what do you like to do? You, you like to go back to the drawing board here, or do you want you want us to rule on this today? Well, this uh, property is not abandoned. I have my eyes on it. I have plans for it, so it's not. And uh, with this uh, guy that I have, the only thing he said he can do for me is to apply for a permit or to put a fence around it. Otherwise, you will have to be going there 
more than each month to check on that. So with this, so we understand that. So that's why I'm presenting you with, with, with the choice. Now you can let us go ahead and, and rule, which it looks like it's not going to go in your favor, but I can't say, or you can, you know, withdraw this and try to figure out something else to do, because if we rule against you, the fence will have to come down because it's six feet chain link. Um, so, or you can, you know, withdraw your case today and try to figure out what else you want to do. So I'm giving you the choice of what you want to do right now. Uh, what I want to do is to try to uh, put a fence around it. If it's going to be a reduced fence, either way, uh, to act to obtain a permit for a four foot fence, I definitely cannot afford to leave that area open. That leaves it open. Even the next door neighbor, that building on the, the property on the left side of it, they, are, they, they have even a dumpster on that property, they themselves. You know okay. I mean? So I have to so apply you, so, for the permit. All right. So you will, you'll withdraw your case today. And then you reapply with uh, with um, fencing that is allowable in the area. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Could mm -hmm. could we just confirm with Mr. Riccardi that he would not have to come back um, <clears throat> if uh, if he's proposing a four foot tall chain link fence in the front yard? We wouldn't want to advise him that. Um, that he no, would... I'm not saying four foot chain link. I'm just saying he just needs to go back to the drawing board about what he wants to do. I didn't specify what kind of fence. So if you want to ask Mr. Cardi that, go ahead. I guess through the chair, Madam Chair. Oh, I, I see Mr. Riccardi just unmuted himself. Thank you. It would have to be a full review of that issue. You said it have to be a, re a review of the issue. And Madam Chair, just to the appellant, um, one question, is he open to the ornamental style, the wrought iron style fencing? <clears throat> I believe that's what the city would prefer to see, right, Maurice? <clears throat> Mr. Um, Madam Chair, I, I'm not sure what, I, I would like to see, I guess, a different proposal and, and then evaluate it at that time. Uh, I do know that there are other chain link fences in the area on East 140th Street. And I actually, uh, there are other chain link fences, as you can see in this area. But I also understand the councilman's point that the whole area is going to be upgraded with brand new uh, major investment of a streetscape. So I'm not. I'm just not sure that chain link is appropriate moving forward. I think it would be a good idea to meet with the councilman and the CDC potentially and uh, discuss this as uh, as uh, Member Brown has suggested. Well, yeah, that would be on him whether he wants to do that. But apparently, right now he just wants to withdraw and uh, come up with a different scheme. So it might be that the CDC can help him with that or not. Um, since he's out of since he's out of town, but um, we'll we'll receive his withdrawal and then he can go ahead and figure out what he wants to do. So without objection, board. No objection. Without, without objection. My only comment is, can uh, can we make sure that he has uh, the contact information for the CDC since he's out of town um, to help expedite that meeting, perhaps. Madam Chair, I can, and this is Liz, I can be sure to email him the councilman's email and phone number. I do not know who the development corporation is out there Adam, in this area. It's Greater Collinwood. It says it at the bottom. Okay. Yes, Madam Chair, we'd be w more than willing to, this is Peggy Kearsey from Greater Collinwood. We'd be more right. than willing to facilitate the, the meeting, even if it's on a Zoom call. With between the appellant and the councilman. Right. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably going to have to be considering the time zone difference and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Peggy. You're welcome. Uh, Madam Chair, Liz, would you be able? Oh, they were copied on that letter. I wanted to make sure that yeah. he, he received that was Peggy the letter. from. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, to Ms. Kersey, could you, Peggy, would you be willing to take the be the point person on that and just make sure that um, connections are made and that happens? Um, Madam Chair, um, uh, Ms. Faith, absolutely. Great, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I think also uh, Ariel Washington, I think uh, this is her area. This is a new neighborhood planner for the Northeast section. Ariel, is this is this part of your area? Yes, it is. So I think we can probably have Ariel uh, also assist right. with uh, with this project. Good. Okay, good. All right, moving on. Great. Okay, we are with, let's see, calendar number 2006 West Drop Avenue. Julie Slater proposes to establish a plant nursery, install two hoop houses, a shed, apron, and gravel drive, and approximately 380 linear feet of six foot high fence on a Cleveland land bank parcel located in a, located in a C1 multifamily residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as outlined in the agenda and the public record of which there are four. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. And before we get to that, Madam Chair, I just wanted to point out, you'll see the red text. We had a yep. front yard setback violation that we have resolved. At least we think we've resolved uh, before before the meeting. All right, you guys know I'll ask about those. All right, thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand. Reply, I do. State your name and your address, please. I do. Julie Slater, 25120 Lakeshore Boulevard in Euclid. Here's a 15614 St. Clair. Okay, Madam Chair. Thank you. History to property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since, since 1929. In our records administration office, we found that in 1944, a permit was issued to convert a structure on the site from one to two family dwelling. In 1970, a permit was issued to um, erect a chain link fence. Um, there are no variances on file for this, and in the more recent history, we found that in 2014, a per <clears throat> permit was issued to demolish a structure on the site, and that's what, all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the agricultural fencing, minimum front yard, front yard encroachment, and driveway, re driveway regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and that granting the variance variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Um, Ms. Slater, are you the spokesperson? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm the owner of Meadow City Native Plant Nursery. Uh, this is our first year in operation and we grow uh, native wildflowers, trees and shrubs in pots for sale for people who are uh, gardening or doing ecological restoration. These are popular for pollinator gardens, for example. Um, so we currently have a lease from the Cleveland City Land Bank for two lots um, at that location. Um, and we're classified as a market garden. Uh, so that's like an urban agriculture operation that's growing things for sale. Um, and uh, I wasn't sure what to include, but um, this is the surrounding. Oh, if you could go back. Um, that's the surrounding zoning. Um, we're in a multifamily district, but it's not in the middle of a neighborhood. It's um, 
on kind of this awkward corner of the street. Uh, across the street from us is a church uh, surrounding further to the east, um, there are businesses and to the south of us is a highway on ramp. So our adjacent neighbor to the west um, is a residential unit. Um, but besides that, we don't have any direct neighbors there that are residences. Um, and then just to the right, you can see there's a large piece of city right of way. Um, and I've got a streetscapes permit to create um, a native plant garden there. Um, if you could do the next slide. Um, this is just to show the size relative to the average size of the lots on the block. Um, so it's the um, eastern uh, lot with that orange dot on it, where we would be doing a um, having a hoop house that would encroach on the required um, 30 foot front yard setback. Um, that lot, the average depth is 63 feet, and the depth on the eastern side is as little as 46 feet. So if you had a 30 foot setback that only leaves 16 feet to do anything with. Um, and then the average lot is 139 feet deep. So I think this meets the requirement for being significantly smaller than the other lots in the area. And that lot wouldn't be, there wouldn't be very much usable space if we um, don't have that uh, variance granted. Um, the reason we're having to put the hoop houses on the eastern lot is because the western lot has a slope to it um, and the land bank doesn't allow us to grade or move around any of the earth on the site. Um, so if you could show the next slide, uh, this is our site plan. Um, basically, uh, we're in the building permit, we requested to put in a six foot tall fence, which would be wood frame with wire panels. Um, on the northern and eastern sides. And then on the southern side, it would be a six foot tall fence with solid wood, um, just to create a barrier between us and the highway on ramp. Um, and then we're also requesting two hoop houses um, on the eastern lot and a shed. Um, we, uh, I know the application said that we were requesting a gravel drive and a concrete apron, but we're not doing that anymore because the land bank doesn't like for people to do that. So we're withdrawing that part of the request. Um, could you show the next slide? Um, so this is just in context with the neighborhood. Um, so the hoop houses are on the Eastern side, even though it's an encroachment on the front yard, it's not right next to anyone's house and hopefully it won't um, be a big bother to anybody there. Um, and then the next two slides just show kind of a rough um, idea of what this would look like um, from the street. Um, so yes, I'm open to any questions. Oh, um, yeah, we also have the support of uh, Councilman Polensic and of the CDC in this matter. We've been working with them from the beginning of the plan. Um, okay, uh, looks nice. Um, so this is a business, correct? You said yes. And so, what were your hours of operation be roughly? I'm sorry. What were your hours of operation be roughly? Um, I haven't completely decided. Uh, I think that next year we would like to do Monday through Saturday, um, something like 10 a.m. to 6 or 7 p.m. Okay, we'll we'll make it seven because we'll have to put it in the just to give you in case you decide you want to stay open a little later because it's you know daylight's longer. Okay, yeah, that would be great. Make, could we could we put it down till eight? I think it's light till eight in the summer. We we would only yes. be open in the summer also, it, like spring through the fall. Okay, so Monday through Saturday, ten a.m. to eight p.m. Yes. Um. All right. Uh. Let's go to uh, Ms. Kiersey at the CDC. Uh, yes, um, Madam Chair, we stand in full support. We actually uh, worked with Julie to get the land bank applications in. Um, this is These two parcels are not something that we're going to build on. Uh, they don't lend themselves to being built on for housing or residential, um, but because it is on the cusp of the 
uh, Waterloo Arts District. This does lend itself very nicely to this area. Uh, so we did work with her um, and uh, then came up with, you know, she uh, took it upon herself to say that she would actually then go and landscape the uh, city parcel that is at the top of the triangle right at Rust Trop and 152 um, and the marginal. So uh, we fully stand in support of her plan and we'll work with her to uh, get this to fruition. Great, thank Great. you. Uh, Board, any questions? No question, it looks like a good use for that irregular, irregular shaped lot. Mm -hmm. All right, here are no questions. Um, Madam Chair, Maurice Rowland, City Planning, just uh, oh, throwing yeah, in our support. Um, totally forgot about uh, this, you guys again. <laughs> you did. Um, you know, this is a, a very weird uh, parcel here. It, yeah, it's, yes. you know, it's a, it's a noisy spot. There's an on-ramp, you know, with cars going by at 60 miles an hour on the back of it, on the front. It's it's just it's just not conducive to, to, to building residential, even though it is multifamily. So we think this is a great solution uh, to reuse this land. Um, I have to say that it's been great working with Julie. She's been very cooperative and very open to uh, suggestions and changes. She moved the fence uh, back four feet. Originally, that was going to be right along the sidewalk. She moved that back. Even before I asked, it's like she was reading my mind. Um, we figured out that the uh, you know that she meets the variance for the front yard setback. So uh, yes, we are in full support of this project as well. Great, thank you. All right, and, and here are no questions from the board. Uh, entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, I think we're all in agreement. This looks like a great project. Uh, great to see a nursery uh, that's focused on native plants and encouraging pollinators. Um, and a good use of space, as uh, has been noted, uh, these two parcels are really not buildable for in a, uh, for residential. So, uh, an alternative use, uh, particularly since she's willing to add the planting area um, at the triangle to the east, uh, really enhances the neighborhood. I think um, so. Uh, and uh, as noted. Uh, the, Variance number four on the agenda is being withdrawn since uh, the land bank uh, does not allow for the gravel driveway or the uh, maneuver the the uh, motor court pad. Uh, so we are looking at variances one, two, and three, um, and I think we're all in agreement. Well, I don't know that we are. But we'll vote on that. Uh, but um, uh, I move that we go ahead and approve these variances. For calendar number 22-164. Can I have a second? Board member Holzer, a second. Ms. Holzer with the second. Go ahead, call the roll. Madam Chair, could we also add the amendment that the uh, there is a revised plan showing the fence will be set back four feet? Yes. Oh, Madam Chair, one other addition. Can we just have uh, uh, the, uh, I imagine there's going to be a gate to allow people to come in to the property in order to purchase and look at just if you could add that to the to the uh, to the drawing that would be great. So Maurice, you're asking for a new drawing showing the gate. Is that correct? Just yeah, I don't know if it has to be a new drawing. She could just indicate on the drawings, you know, okay. when she where the gate is. Yeah, yeah. I can okay. do that. Right. Great. Okay, we just need to have that submitted then. So okay. I'll submit that today. Great, thanks. All right, I'll call the roll. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bate? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar number 22-164 is granted conditionally. We will hold ratification until we get that revised drawing showing a gate. And then we will ratify it once we receive that or the, the following Monday, and then we will send the appellant a letter. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Good luck with everything. When do you intend to open? Yes. Good luck. I'd like to open in the spring, but we'll see. I got to get everything built. So spring Great. or summer. Great. Good. Looking forward to it. All right. Next case.
Next case is calendar number 22-166. This is at 17213 DeForest Avenue. Ohio REO Group proposes to erect a bedroom and dining room addition attached to existing residents in an A1-1 family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as outlined in the agenda and the public record of which there is one. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. I am swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm? that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please raise your hand, reply, I do. State your name and your address, please. Thomasina Triplett, 25451 Glenbrook Boulevard, Euclid, Ohio. I do. I do, Rosalind McAllister, 7019. Indiana Avenue, Ohio, REO. Interesting. Uh, anyone else for this case? Uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. History to property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. In our records administration office, we found that in 1957, a permit was issued to erect a one family frame dwelling. 1959, a permit was issued to erect a garage. There are no variances on file and um, nothing of note in the more recent history. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting an area variance from the interior side yard regulation of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Uh, who will be the spokesperson for this case? I will, Thomasina Triplett. Hey, Ms. Triplett, go ahead. Tell us what you'd like to do. Um, it seems like you're here for seems like you're here for four feet, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, the uh, property now is uh, going to be uh, totally renovated, and mm -hmm. we find that uh, the one problem was that the kitchen was so small that it was was not be usable. And there was virtually nowhere to eat. It's not big enough to be an eating kitchen. Uh, so we thought in order to make it be more of a home and up to standard for the neighborhood uh, that we would like to extend it back to create that um, eating area and give them a very nice size uh, bedroom on the first floor. Ah, okay. Looks nice. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you. And so the, the variance is a side yard variance you're looking for? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the property is presently, it was built actually, uh, it's already under, uh, I believe the, the existing property is under that 10 foot variance. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's perhaps why there's already a fence there that was there previous, previous to us coming. Um, but we have, we have met probably all of the neighbors. Everyone is happy uh, that the property is going to be uh, renovated. It's a lot of homeowners on that street and they take pride in it. And we have worked with the city before we've taken um, properties that were actually deemed uh, as being condemned for the proper permits and uh, totally rehab them. So we like to create uh, final products that can be considered homes. And we just think it would add to that uh, usability for a family purchasing it. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ms. McAllister, is something you want to add here? Uh, no, thank you. Thomasina okay. has covered it all. All right. <laughs> uh, city planning. Maurice Rollins, City Planning. Uh, Madam Chair, as we have uh, seen these quite frequently, um, and as the applicant stated, uh, you know, this house and this whole subdivision were probably built on six foot side yards. 
Um, so they couldn't even rebuild the house right now uh, based on the current code. Um, they are not projecting any further into the side yard than the uh, existing house does. Uh, we think this is fantastic that they're renovating this house and bringing it back up to use um, and expanding it um, to make it even more uh, uh, attractive to uh, new home buyers. So we 100% support uh, this, this the, uh, the variance here. Agree. Sorry that the parents was so minor. They had to come here, but totally agree okay. with that. Um, board, any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, as city planning noted, the neighborhood is built on six foot side yards. Uh, so uh, that's the current condition. The addition does not extend any further uh into the side yard than the current footprint so given that i move that we go ahead and approve calendar number 22-166 i have a second please board member holzer second miss holzer with the second go ahead call the roll Ms. brown yes Ms. holzer yes Ms. bay yes Ms. britt yes Calendar number 22-166 is granted. It'll be ratified next week, and we will send the appellant the letter. All right, thank you. Our next thank case. you. It looks like this is our last case, too. Um, calendar number 22-145. This is at 2147 West 20th Street, 2153 LLC proposes to erect a 23 foot by 40 foot three story frame single family residence bedrooms in the basement with detached gable garage in a D12 family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as outlined in the agenda and the public record of which there are 3. This case was postponed from August 29th at the request of the appellant, appellant due to a scheduling conflict and no testimony was taken at that time. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply, I do. State your name and your address, please. I do, Wesley Harper, 812 Huron Road, Suite 305, Cleveland, Four four one one five. I do Donna Gregonis uh, with Tremont West Development Corporation, two four zero six Professor Avenue. Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Chair. Thank you. History of property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'd like to first announce, though, that the ownership on this property was incorrectly um, posted or, or um, identified. The owner is actually DI development and that is D as in David and um, I <coughs> as in uh, Igloo, whatever, I don't know, um, development. Igloo. So, <laughs> so um, we're not sure what happened when we did our research on the county records, um, but we found that the ownership um, we received a letter from the neighbor um, who is actually 2153 LLC. He stated that he does not own this property. So again, the ownership is actually DI development and not 2153 LLC. Uh, so Madam Chair, the um, <clears throat> zoning has not changed on this property since 1929. In um, our records administration office, we found in 1974, Permit was issued to repair fire damage. And then, uh, Madam Chair, in uh, 2005, a permit was issued to demolish a two story single frame dwelling. Thank you. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting area variances from the minimum required distance, maximum gross floor area, and interior side yard encroachment regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. 
Okay, I'm assuming Mr. Harper, you're the spokesperson. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Go ahead. Okay, um, the parcel uh, that we're looking at today is at 2147 West 20th Street. Um, we've been working with the new owner, uh, which is DI Development. I, I assume that uh, the ownership actually transferred in between us submitting and uh, us being here today. So that might explain the, uh, uh, the issue uh, with the ownership. So uh, what we're proposing is a new uh, three-story uh, gabled roof house uh, designed to match the uh, scale and proportions of the surrounding homes. And so uh, we have uh, the, the home uh, basically centered within the site, um, a detached two-car garage in the rear with access off of uh, a city alley, uh, porch towards the front. The setbacks that we're looking for are uh, actually uh, a little more generous than typical in Tremont. Um, and uh, so what we're, we're looking to get is pretty typical, uh, it, at least as far as the list of variances that we're looking for in this neighborhood. Um, go to the next slide, please. Uh, so you can see the uh, zoning submission that we have here. We have, uh, again, a three-story home, but that, that third floor uh, is pitched uh, in a gable fashion to fit in with the neighborhood. And you can see the uh, front porch that's proposed. In the rear, we have a uh, covered patio. Um, and then the uh, material would be a horizontally oriented lat siding, uh, asphalt shingle roof. Um, and so uh, we think it's a project that will uh, fit into the neighborhood quite well. And uh, with that, I, I answer any questions. We, we have been to Duck Island Block Club. We were approved. Uh, I, I believe there's a support letter um, that's been forwarded to Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, and then we went to the uh, Tremont Economic Development Committee and HDRS. So with that, I open up to questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Donna. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, Donna Gregonis with Tremont West Development Corporation. So Mr. Harper um, did come to Duck Island Block Club and he went to Economic Development Committee and both were in support of the project. Um, the only thing that the Economic Development Committee wanted to make sure of is that the um, deed restrictions were adhered to. Um, and they were minimal and it didn't seem like an issue, but we just wanted to make sure that it was mentioned uh, today. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you. What are the restrictions, Madam Chair? I, I could speak to that, Madam Chair, this is Wes Harper. Um, uh, the design that is shown has a slightly smaller uh, dimension of trim at the corners. Um, and then we need to extend the eaves uh, relative to the uh, vertical walls. Uh, the, the previous owner uh, who lives in the neighborhood and owns the house next door wanted to make sure that this house would fit into the neighborhood. Uh, and so you could see it's a little bit different than the homes we typically uh, propose. Um, but those deed restrictions will be uh, adhered to and will be shown in the final permit drawings, uh, which will be reviewed by HDRS, or I believe uh, the local planner. Um, so we have every intention of meeting those criteria. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions from the board? Um, all right. Uh, city Madam, oh. uh, Madam Chair, Maurice Rowland, City Planning. The, as uh, Mr. Harper has, uh, has indicated, the uh, Internal uh, Housing Design Review Subcommittee uh, met and reviewed and approved these uh, these drawings and this this project. Uh, we feel that it is appropriate uh, style and uh, scale of house for the neighborhood, and we recommend approval on all of the variances. Great, thank you. 
All right, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, we have approval from uh, all the parties that are typically involved. City Planning approves, CDC approves, Block Club, uh, HDRS, uh, all positive. We always like to see all that, everyone involved and in agreement. Uh, these are typical variances for uh, this area of the city, this neighborhood. So with all that being said, I move that we go ahead and approve calendar number 22-145. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Member Brown, I second. Ms. Brown with the second. Go ahead, call the roll. Ms. Holter? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar number 22-145 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send the appellant a letter. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hey, thank you. All right, old business, one through three, without objection. Without objection. Without objections. All right, what's going on down here, Liz? So the appellant here in this case missed the hearing um, on Monday and stated that he had a family um, emergency and is now uh, requesting reinstatement. Um, so he, he is in a rush to get this back on, but of course it, it, it's, you would have to vote on whether or not you would wanna reinstate it first and then decide on the date. Um, but here's the email here that he sent us regarding the uh, incident or the reasoning. So again, it's it's similar situation that we see regularly when a person does not attend the hearing without, you know, without contacting us. It's happens often. Okay. Um all right. So uh board, uh is is everyone okay with reinstatement? If so, without objection. Without objection. No objection. <clears throat> All right. Um, when can we put them on the uh, agenda next, Liz? Um, so I know we were trying to keep October 31st light. Um, October 31st would be the soonest, and then November 7th would be after that. Uh, how light is the 31st? Um, I think we have uh, four cases on there now. Check. Not even have it completed yet. Yeah. It's it's very light. We only have four cases on there right now. Um, all right. I guess you can add this one onto there, but then considering circumstances, okay. that'll be it for that date. Great. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, the other thing is the conference is coming up um, next week. Easy. And so um, I'm registering everybody today and they need to know the lunch preferences. Uh, I know Ms. Brown is going for sure. I'm not sure. Are you going to be there for the lunch, Ms. Brown? Yes. Okay. I sent over an email. Would you, did you see it or would you like me to tell you what the options are? I or will you email to... you. Yeah, I just want to email me after. Okay. If I can get that right away, then I could put in our registration. That's yes, great. Liz, I haven't opened that up yet this morning, but it looked a little blurry in the preview shot. Okay. I can, I can send it again then. Okay. I can actually um oh yeah, I'll send it again. Okay. All right. And I'm not sure if Ms. Holzer was going to attend. Ms. Holzer, if you could email me that today, I'm not sure if you want to stay right now. Unfortunately, I have standing meetings on Tuesday that I can't miss. Okay. Understood. Oh, go. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. That's all that I have. And welcome to Ariel, our new planner. Uh, she, Hello. oh, she's still here. Yes. Yeah, she's still here. I see, I see her face. Yes. So I just wanted to give her a welcome. Yes. Welcome. She'll be doing the Northeast uh, planning district. Excellent. 
Great. All right, everyone, have a good week. Thank you. Thank you, you everyone. Too. Thank you. Bye.